Join us on Patreon. The membership only starts at one dollar. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode. So today we are continuing our comedy journey with some more Al Murray, and this one is called "Name a Country We've Defeated." It. We've defeated them. Now we just started re reacting to Al Murray maybe about two weeks ago, so he's still fairly new on our radar. And in my previous video, <laughs> or in our previous video, I said that British comedy wasn't funny. Yeah. That was that was the a comment section went wild. Yeah, the comment section went wild, <laughs> and that was just a perception that I had growing up from listening to um, growing up. Yeah, growing up watching oh. like Mr. Bean and uh, the other guy that smashes the watermelon, I don't and know. some other British comedy sketch shows. Like whenever I've seen British comedy shows, they just weren't funny to me. And so that was one of the main reasons why we decided to start reacting to comedy was to discover comedians that we're not familiar with or listen to comedy from other uh, cultures or, or other areas that we're not familiar with to learn about other comedians. So if you have some suggestions, leave them down below in the comment section. Yeah. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, this is Name a Country We Defeated. Let's go. We have defeated every single fucking country in the world at war. Name a country, Gary. Germany, 1945, thank you very much. <laughs> very recent oh, wow. job done Damn. twice in one century. If only they tried again around 99, we've got the fucking hat trick. <laughs> Another country, please. Argentina. Argentina, 82, no help for no one else. And that, of course, was a war not for oil, but for penguins. Because we all know what? penguins are an essential ingredient in making Guinness, aren't they? <laughs> 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 you boil them up, the white stuff floats the top, oh. job done. Another country, please. No, that's funny. Yeah, another one. France, thank you. We're in 1815 Waterloo. We haven't heard from them since. Yeah, another one, please. Oh. oh. Canada. Yeah, Canada used to be part of the British Empire, which means they're an ally of ours. As you know, being an ally of ours counts as losing to us. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why else are the Canadians so miserable? Another one, please. Oh. <laughs> hey? Spain, 1588, Battle of the Armada. Thank you, sir. We haven't heard from them since. Another oh. one. Uganda, uh, that was an African colony, of course, that at one point used to belong to the Germans. And in 1919, the League of Nations, as you know, when the Treaty of Versailles, when the world was redivided, mm. the African colonies were partitioned and uh, separated right. between France and, uh, and Great Britain. And we got Uganda as a result simply of uh, it being defeat the Germans. We got given Uganda, which sounds like fucking winning there, without even having to go there. Result. Another one, please. Damn. Another one. Another one. Damn. You need to go to more pub quizzes, love. Another one, like, please. He's just popping out this knowledge. He's smart. Hey, United States. All right, okay. Oh. You're thinking War of Independence. America finds itself free of Great Britain. Yeah, they see that as a win. We see that as a lucky fucking escape. <laughs> <laughs> let's not forget, in the War of 1812 to 1814, the Royal Navy sailed up the Potomac River, set fire to the White House, and the Americans had to whitewash it to cover up the fire damage, which is why it's called the White House. The Americans sued oh. for peace at the end of 1814. <laughs> even though they won a battle at the end of the war, they, the war's already over. The stupid fuckers were still fighting, even though they <laughs> already lost and that is America wow. they've been working for us ever since another one please <laughs> Belgium 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 of course is a creation of the uh, series of treaties that came out at the end of the Napoleonic Wars in, uh, the fallout of Waterloo 1815 it was the Duchy of the Duchy of Burgundy of course in the Netherlands states were divided up divided up into two buffer zones in order to prevent any one single power taking control of the Netherlands which is of course our dangerous flank between Germany and France and we don't like European hegemony of one power and that's why Belgium and Holland were cut up to a buffer zone created and I think oh. if you create a country out of thin fucking air, you've won. Another one, please. Wow. <laughs> oh. Wow. Italy. Yeah, 1943. Bot folded early, didn't they? Another one, oh. please. China. But, but, China. Hey? China. China. Opium War, 1860. Another one, please. Oh. 1860. Burkina Faso used to be a German colony. I referred to my previous answer. Another one, please. <laughs> Hey? Norway. Norway. They used to be the Vikings, love. We saw them off in the end, didn't we? <laughs> look at that. That's a come down. Once they were Vikings, now look at them. Norwegians. That's a fucking collapse. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh. helmets to... Warning helmets. <laughs> <laughs> Japan, we got the Yanks to do it for us. Look at <laughs> Peru. What language do they speak in Peru, sir? Portuguese. Portuguese. No, they don't, actually. They speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah, which means in 1512, when Pope Julius XII divided the New World into two lines, two sections down the line of longitude 129, the stuff of the east of that went to Portugal, which is why they speak Portuguese in Brazil, the stuff of the west of that went to Spain, which means Peru was technically part of Spain when we defeated Spain in 1598, Battle of the Armada, so we done Peru without even having a visit. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> oh, wow. Can't argue with it. 
Oh, man. That wow. was so interesting. So a lot yeah. of people did tell us that he's incredibly he smart. is incredibly smart. Right. Um, and this is a character, like a okay. pub character. Right. And he has different characters that he does on stage. Okay. This was not only funny, right. but very informative. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you, you can find a comedian that can entertain you and educate you at the same time, I think yeah. you've really found a gem. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, really glad that we actually started reacting to him because yeah. it kind of reminds me of George Carlin a little bit. When we mm. started reacting to George Carlin comedy, we were laughing our asses off, but we were actually learning some Definitely. stuff about... Definitely. You know, Intelligent comedy. Intelligent comedy. Yeah.